All right, so in this video, we're going to be doing some review of disc washer and shell method. Now, we've talked about these separately in past videos. It's been a lot of information, so I want to bring it all together in one video and kind of just give a summary of what we've learned. So, first off, we're going to talk about disc method. Now, when do we use disc method? Well, if we have a graph uh, y equals, let, let's say that we're we're rotating a region about the x-axis, okay? So we're rotating a region about the x-axis, and it's going to be bounded by y equals x squared, x equals 2, and y equals 0. So we get a region here. Now, what happens when we revolve around the x-axis? So we're going to get something that looks like, basically like uh, this. So we'll get a, we'll get a little kind of cone-like figure, okay? And each cross-section of this cone, if we slice it this way, is going to be a circle, right? It's going to be a circle. And that circle has area pi r squared, okay? So if we integrate this, okay, if we integrate this from here to here, we get a volume because we're adding up all those cross-sections together, giving a volume. So that's going to be the integral of your pi r squared from a to b. Okay, so whatever that ends up being, then you got your answer. Okay, now notice that when we use disk method, okay, our, our cross sections are perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Okay, so cross sections as I was saying, cross sections perpendicular to axis of rotation. That's what we're doing. Um, so that's how you find your radius, right? Your radius is just this piece right here, okay? And that's perpendicular to your axis of rotation. Now, we also know that for a horizontal axis, we're going to be integrating with respect to y. So we're going to have uh, an integral with something in terms of x. We're going to get uh, a dx over here for a horizontal line. If we have a vertical axis, so we have an axis straight up and down like the, the y-axis, we're going to be getting a dy here, and this radius is going to be in terms of y. Okay, so this also, all this, is the same for washer method, okay? But for washers, you're going to be getting uh, like a, a region that is going to be bounded between two curves, okay? So I will draw one right now. All right, so for washer method, okay, we have y equals x squared and y equals x. We have a region between these, and we want to rotate that about the x-axis. Now, what we do, we're going to end up with a solid that, or we'll, we'll end up with a, yeah, solid, I guess, that has cross-sections of a washer, okay? Now, these washers are hollow in the center, so there is an area in the center that we need to take out of each of our cross sections. That's the whole. That's the whole idea of a, of the washer method. So to do that, we change our formula to be that the area is equal to pi times big R squared minus little R squared. Now, the big R, okay, the big R is representing this red line right here. This is big R. Okay, this is your radius from your outermost point to the center and your little r is from the is the inner radius right it's from the inner point to your center so that's r okay and you're going to integrate this the same okay so you're just going to have the volume equal the integral from a to b of pi r squared minus r squared and whatever it's dy or dx depending on whether you're revolving around a horizontal axis or a vertical axis okay then you know okay i'm integrating with respect to x i'm integrating with respect to y and of course to just figure out if you should use washer method in the first place you need to remember that your cross sections are going to be perpendicular to your axis of rotation so is that going to work okay and you'll see that when we talk about shell method all right now, here is an example of when we would need to use shell method, okay? We have a graph here. Uh, this is the graph of y equals 
2x squared minus x cubed. Okay, and this is, the, this is the graph that I showed in the original shell method video. If we want to revolve this around the y-axis, okay, we're not going to be able to do washer. I mean, we might be able to, but it's going to be very, very hard to do washer method, okay? Because our cross, our cross sections here would need to be horizontal lines, okay? But we can do cross sections that are vertical lines, okay? But these cross sections aren't going to be they're not going to be washers, okay? Um, or they're not going to be circles. They're going to be cylinders, okay? They're going to be cylinders that have a volume, okay? So, these, and, and to, um, to kind of picture that, imagine this little region right here, okay? Let's, let's get rid of this line. Imagine this little region right here and revolve it around the y-axis, okay? Then you're kind of going to get a little cylinder here, okay? And basically what you're going to do is you're going to get a bunch of those little cylinders along this region and you're going to add them up in an integral. So you're going to get volume equal to the integral of 2 pi, so it's going to be from a to b, of 2 pi times your radius, okay, so you can remember that as circumference, times your height, times your thickness. Okay, that will either be uh, dx or dy depending on what variable you're integrating with respect to which is the next thing that we're going to be talking about So for shell method everything is basically going to be different here, okay? Cross sections are parallel to the axis of rotation, right? Or th this is our our cross sections, right? They're vertical and our axis of rotation is also vertical. Okay, so they're parallel You also have for, for horizontal axes or you're going to integrate with respect to y, okay? So, for vertical axes, that must mean that you're integrating with respect to x. So, last thing, if you didn't understand uh, the the uh, the radius and the height, okay, those are the two hardest parts of shell method, and I'm just gonna explain that really, really quick. So, if you think about this region, okay, this region that I was talking about before, revolved around the y-axis, it's going to have a radius, and that radius is going to be from, and, and of course, this region is going to be infinitesimally small. So, this point is going to be basically at the same x coordinate as this point okay so you're gonna have a radius of the cylinder which is going to be that r right there okay and the height of your cylinder is going to be this piece right here okay so for instance the radius of this cylinder is x and the height of this cylinder is equal to 2x squared minus x cubed okay so that's just a quick example there um, and that basically sums it up. So for disk method, I mean, you could, it's obvious when your cross sections are going to be circles, uh, when revolving around, you know, a certain axis or something, then use, uh, disk method. Okay. Disk method is by far the, I think the easiest method to use. Washer method is probably the most tedious to use because you have two radii to figure out. Okay. Um, a lot of people just end up using shell method for basically everything except for uh, when you can use disk method. Um, so if you want to use washer method, it's, it's up to you. Okay, but that's when you get, of course, those washers uh, as cross sections. And then you have shell method. I mean, shell method, you can pretty much use this for, I'm pretty sure you can use it for almost anything. So shell method is extremely flexible. Um, not to, you know, be talking shell method up too much, but seriously, I think it can make your life a lot easier. So, um, yeah, that does it for this video. I hope that cleared things up. I'm going to be doing a uh, example problem video where you basically just, you're not given, okay, solve this using disk washer or shell method. You just need to find the volume uh, using any method, okay? So that does it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.